guys, welcome to Money in the Bank. <laughs> we have another exciting episode for you today. Uh, this week we're going to change things up. You know, we've been focused a lot on investing or real estate, and we obviously still have a lot more we can say on all of those topics. But today we are just, I think getting into the holiday season, it's a really good time to talk about marketing and how every company is going to convince you, try to convince you to buy their product. And if you don't need it, don't buy it. It's definitely that time of year, right? I mean, right? if you're if you're still paying for cable, which you know we we, we talked about, we cut the cord a couple of years ago. Um, you're seeing commercials like crazy for uh, pre Thanksgiving Day sales. I'm seeing emails and news articles coming out about the new you know Black Friday deals that are coming out early. Oh yeah, things like that, right? And they everybody can't... needs a new TV, right? Oh yeah, they you know 70 inch on sale for two dollars, whatever it's going to be, but. Uh, it's that time of year where it, you know it's as soon as I think Christmas or as soon as Halloween rolls around. Um, even this year, I think it was a little bit earlier than Halloween. Yeah. I'm seeing stuff in all the stores. They're getting all the the merchandise ready. Some stores are cutting back on on uh, Black Friday this year though. Um, yeah. Some stores have announced that they're not going to really do it anymore because it's been one dangerous for some people, mm -hmm. or the sales have been down in the last recent years because everybody's doing like the Cyber Monday or just Black Friday shopping right. online in the first. Or place. I think people finally realize like. There are some good Black Friday deals, but unless you're like one of those first 10 people in the stores, the deals really aren't that good. Right. Like you go out and you think you're getting these good deals, but like Kohl's I think is the most notorious for it where they mark everything up and you check out and it's like your total is $35 and you saved $5,000. Right. Like the they're the most ridiculous. Mark it up to mark it down. Yep. Very yeah. I mean, but that's like Kohl's year round. Like everything is 70% off. Yep. Um, it's their business model. <laughs> but I think like a lot of stores really started following that and now with, um, oh, Camel, Camel, Camel is what we use mm -hmm. uh, to check prices, you know, over a year. And you can see, like, right on that website, oh, this was actually cheaper in February on Amazon. Um, and we are definitely people that we don't have to buy Christmas gifts for each other. So if I waited until February, you'd be like, great, I'm happier you got a better deal. So. Right, or we buy things when we need them or want them and make sure it's a good deal before we buy it, right? So yeah, camelcamelcamel.com is a very popular website to use to check things on Amazon. So you just copy the URL of whatever page you're looking up for whatever item you want. You drop it into the, the search bar on Camel and it tells you a graphical representation of here's the total lifetime of the price of this item uh, yeah. for the for the life that it's been on Amazon. So very easy to check like, hey, this spikes down, you know, every quarter it like sinks down and then you can set an alert too and say like, hey, send me an email when like the, the price tanks on this. You don't even have to be looking at it. So there's smarter ways to get good deals all year long. Don't be just thinking that it's, you know, Black Friday is the only time of year that you're going to get the best deal. Because if you look at articles or, uh, you know, follow the news after Black Friday, most people don't get good deals. Like right. most of the, the deals weren't good in the first place because it's like, oh, you saved like 10 cents on like, like this thing that, you know, in March was either going to be reduced in price or in the last March was already reduced in price. Exactly. And people just aren't paying attention because the marketing is just telling you now's the time to buy. Right. Yeah. And I think a big thing, you know, for Black Friday specifically is people go out and they don't have like a list of these are the items that I have to buy today. They go out and they're like, oh, this 4K TV is you know, 50% off, Why, well, I should have a 4K TV, I guess. Right. But Without realizing, like, you might not even have a cable provider that supports H, you know, HD clarity, right? right? So that 4K isn't doing you any favors. Right, there's, like, no content in 4K. I mean, that's a, that's a tough example. You can get, so there's, like, YouTube videos and a couple things on Netflix that are able to be viewed in 4K. Most con some gaming now, the new Xbox that came out is 4K capable. But all the games that are on the platform aren't really that capable yet, right? It'll be a couple years before we see that. But also there's a huge uh, variance in 4K quality TVs and HDR quality TVs. Um, and just because it says 4K on it doesn't mean it's gonna, a, a, even a good picture. Right. It might still look like blurry and terrible and has terrible color balance and the blacks and whites like aren't very sharp and stuff like that. Uh, Cause you can have really low priced cheap TVs that say they're 4K. It's because everything else in the TV is trash and they just bumped up the resolution. Right. right yeah, so and we, we actually looked at TVs recently and we went with a non 4K option that had better components in other areas. So we have a clearer image still, you know, we were standing there in the store kind of comparing the two. Um, but another important thing to realize is when you get your TV home, you can always play around with the settings. So if it's not, you know, perfectly clear out of the box, you can 
uh, play around with it. You can calibrate it and make it look better. So, um, you know, Brett is a very techie guy, which is why I like to bring up topics like this with you. Uh, And, you know, we don't even have a 4K TV. And you you love this stuff, but you're like, there's not enough content for me, so I'll wait until right. the technology catches up. Um, so I think those are that's just like a really like classic Black Friday example of you know don't don't just buy things because you see a good deal. Buy it if you need it. Buy it if you've been wanting it for a while and you've been watching the price and you're like, oh wow, this is a really good deal. You know, I'm gonna jump on it. I know, like, there's certain things, certain kitchen appliances that sometimes we kind of keep our eye on and wait until they drop in price, and that's fine to do, that's great to do, but don't just, like, go out shopping and load up your cart with a bunch of stuff just because it's a good deal. Right, and if you see that for that price, and this is true any time of the year, right, if you see anything on sale or a coupon or whatever that's gonna get marked down to something, just, just check on that item. See, you know, see how when the last time that was on sale. See what the normal prices for that is on a regular basis. Because don't don't trust what they tell you. Like it was six hundred dollars, now marked down to two hundred dollars. Right? That you don't know that. Like right. they just wrote that in there. That's usually not true, actually. Yeah. So. And I found a lot of times if I'm in the store and I just quick do a Google search, I will mm-hmm. find out that it is the same or cheaper price online somewhere. Um, and I know some people like to support local stores. I'm all for that too. But, um, you know, just if you if you want to support a local store, still just make sure you're buying the product that you want and need, not just buying it because you think it's a deal. I think people, especially around the holidays, get really guilty of that. And then fast forward to March, you're like, all right, time to do my spring cleaning and get rid of all this junk that I just bought on accident. Yeah, so. it's a it's a shopping mindset, right? It's that time of year you're trying to you're trying to get the good deals. You're trying to you think you're doing the right things, but uh, you've got to play the game smart, uh, not like they want you to play it. Exactly. Uh, so we're just going to talk about some other, you know, products that it's very common to see stuff like this with. So, you know, we already mentioned TVs. That's a classic example. Um, but another example is actually vacuum cleaners. So, you know, last summer we went to a home and garden show because we love home stuff and home goods stuff. And we wanted to get some ideas for, you know, paint colors and decoration and all of that. Um, and these shows are really cheap to go to. But the things they are selling are not very cheap at all. Um, So there was a vacuum cleaner there and I was like, oh, you know, we have a lot more hardwood now. I wouldn't mind getting a new vacuum. And this guy was trying to sell me this vacuum cleaner and I was like, oh, is it even good on hardwood floors? And he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, it'll be great on everything. And, you know, watch me pour this mess right here and then I'm gonna vacuum it up. And I just like kept asking questions like, okay, you can vacuum up this like, you know, dirt that you brought in but what about like dog hair or what about human hair and he's like oh it could handle all of that too and I was like but I have no proof and just because you can like vacuum this strip of carpet that's like one pass and you vacuum it 10 times in a row like when I vacuum my living room I do one pass right and and so I think you know that's a classic example he was like this is a thousand dollar vacuum and I was like that's insane like I'm never gonna spend that on a vacuum so it's really easy to get caught up in in kind of the sales, you know, you always have the blender people that go to these shows too, and they're like, look, I can blend an iPhone. And it's like, yeah, but can you <laughs> blend a green smoothie? Right, or uh, we blended something in a Vitamix at my parents' house, right? I think it was like peanuts or peanut butter or something. It was or, seeds, pumpkin oh, so seeds. pumpkin seeds, yeah. yeah, to make pumpkin seed powder. And right, the Vitamix is like, touted as the champion blender and it, it ran out of steam the engine shut off like three times yeah. in trying to just uh you know blend like a, a cup or two cups of pumpkin seeds right and right so it, it shut down it overheated it wouldn't turn back on we thought it broke and then eventually like 20 minutes later i think it started working again it mm-hmm. was a long time um but we do that all the time we do it 10 times in a row we do it with pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds uh we mix in like vegetables and all kinds of stuff right back to back and then you'll do a smoothie right after that right and it just it runs for 30 minutes straight blending all kinds of different things exactly we do ice and all kinds of stuff uh and it was at least the same price as a lower end vitamix or cheaper than most of the tie end vitamixes right so i mean it's it's the best blender that we've seen and we had another one also at the same time or around the same time um that was touted as i don't know that was the one that could blend the iphone yep. it was the blend tech or something like that and that overheated as well. I mean, that, yeah. that couldn't do anything. That, again, like, could That not couldn't even seeds. do a green smoothie. Yeah. It, it would get stuck on kale. Um, so, you know, 
for, and, for what was it, two hundred plus dollars for yeah, that blender? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we we definitely have a more expensive blender. We make our own dog food. We use it literally every day. I, every morning. Every, yeah. All the time. Um, and we used to have a Ninja, which is you know. A, I would say it's higher than a normal blender, but not quite as high as some of the high-end ones. But like that could even do a green smoothie. So just because you know they take these products and they're like, look what it can do, but it's like I never need it to do that. Can it do what it should be doing? Can it <laughs> can it make pumpkin seed powder out of pumpkin seeds? You know, and I think so much, especially with Vitamix right now, like that's just everyone's go-to answer people don't even stop to think or stop to do research all the time. And so I always challenge anybody, whenever you're making a big ticket purchase, YouTube is a great resource. Hop on there, type in the product you're looking at, and type in comparison and it'll right. pull up there's all kinds you know of different stuff. we did the same thing when we bought a juicer i mean it'll just pull up so many different models so many people different people testing the products and then you know if you're spending that amount of money you know you are getting the exact right thing for your needs because you know well everybody does have different needs so the vitamix for your parents has been great you know they have one they love it for our needs, for us making dog food, it just didn't work for us. So, you know, it, it definitely comes down to buy the right thing for you. You know, mm -hmm. don't buy the most popular thing, just buy the right product. Um, you know, and, and I, always, I just have to laugh at those home and garden shows because you see so many examples of this, right? Like the guy with the Cutco knife that's cutting through a hammer and you're like, <laughs> cool, I can cut a hammer, but can't cut a tomato so or or the it, that's not the important factor is like how much it can cut one time when it's brand new out of the box right it's in in a year and a half like is this going to be dull as a dull as a rock right or you know does it, what it does it stand up to because look at when you're buying knives and that's a great example look at what like actual professional chefs are using not celebrity chefs on tv because they all have some kind of like marketing campaign behind right. them that is sponsoring them to use that equipment right look at like what actual chefs in restaurants or that are out on their own look what they carry around on a daily basis because knives are their bread and butter uh, that is their tool of choice for everything that mm -hmm. they do um, right, they, they have an arsenal of different tools, specialized knives, things that last a long time and can hold up, things that you can resharpen very easily, right? And, and it's usually nothing that you would buy in a store that somebody is like on the corner, like right. flagging you down to try the new product. I, I, I'm pretty sure well, none of them Well, and my mind was blown when I found out that blocks of knives actually dull them every time you pull them in and out. Yep. Yeah, and wooden so, blocks. Yeah. so, you know, like you go to Bed Bath & Beyond and all the really nice knives seems like they're in the blocks, you know? And so it's just like, yeah, do some research and realize, you know, we cook all the time at home and we still need to buy new knives. Um, but, we're, you know, we'll do like a chef's knife. We'll get the specific ones we need to cut the things we need to cut. But, you know, then I go over to other people's houses and they fully admit that they never cook at home and they have like a $500 knife block on their counter. And I'm like what are you doing? Yep. Like, why do you have this? And wouldn't you rather have that $500, you know? So definitely just like, don't, don't worry about what the best product is. Worry about what the best product for you is because usually that's very different. Right. And if you're, you know, we've looked into this, you know, we're going to get our own individual knives when we upgrade sets, but for now they work, you know, they're still working. You know, right. Uh, you've only and they were hand-me-downs, of were course. Hand -me -downs. Yep. So I'm going to make them, I'm going to make them last as long as I can, but then, you know, as they fail or as they, you know, as they become like, not as good at cutting squash, like we talked about, we eat a lot of, um, you know, then we're, we're going to upgrade like that knife. Right. And so we'll probably, the chef's knife is the one we use uh, most of the time for the things mm -hmm. that we create in the kitchen. Uh, so we'll probably get a new one of those at the best price, the best knife with the best reviews um, during that time. You know, yeah. and we'll wait for the good deal because I'm not in an immediate need. It hasn't broken in half yet. So uh, I don't need it tomorrow. Um, exactly. But we will get it when we want it. Yeah, and you know, I think on a similar note, but kind of a different product, phones are very similar, which we did an episode about this, so we don't need to rehash all of that necessarily, but I did want to just check in with you. You know, I think a new thing that I'm hearing right now is people are saying, you know, I need to get this new iPhone because it has the best processor. Does the average person really need, like, the best phone processor? No, nobody needs the processor that's in the iPhone. And the processor that's in the new iPhone, you're, there's again, there's a couple new iPhones. The the one that just came out, the pre-orders are all um, going crazy. They're, they're three months backlogged, uh, right, for that big, super expensive $1,000 iPhone X. Um, or iPhone X. Everybody's actually giving in and just calling it the iPhone X now. <laughs> um, uh, they... 
they don't they don't really need it. You just want to have it because you want to be the most important, or or you're like an enthu- tech enthusiast and you want to have the latest and greatest thing. Mm-hmm. You don't need the processing power to do anything. Nobody is sitting there as as like a you know holding maybe they're holding their old phone and they're like oh, it doesn't work anymore. There's a, probably a hundred different phones on the market that out of the box work great uh, for whatever you're gonna do. Yeah. Um, even highly intensive like gaming on your phone that's the most intensive thing you can do on your phone right is play like some high hd high resolution game uh you can't do that for very long because the battery is going to die because the the graphics are sucking that out of there um but a lot of the all the top tier smartphones can handle that right virtual reality or augmented reality is the thing that will be the most demanding on the phones for this you know this as out right now uh end of 2017 and in the future for the next couple years that is definitely the most intensive thing because any virtual reality thing that you can do today that has like the full headsets like the oculus rift that requires like a thousand plus dollar computer to run that with high heavy graphics right um and heavy processing so that's where the chips are going to be focused on in the future but nobody's doing that right now anyway yeah. unless you're unless you're in that space and you know you're in that space um people aren't just like getting that for fun yeah uh, unless they want to get into it see this is why my hobby is like running because it's like the cheapest thing you can do i don't know those uh those marathons really add up Uh, i have never done one so um but you know going back to phones so you know another popular thing that a lot of people do and i've actually never done is buy a warranty with your phone um to me i always just kind of think like if i break my phone and i'm irresponsible which i've actually never done and i've had a phone you know for over a decade Um, But if I break my phone and I'm irresponsible, then I have to go back and deal with my old crappy phone until I can afford to buy myself a new one again. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's always my mentality because some of these warranties really are not cheap. You know, like Google has a warranty if you get any of their phones and Apple Care has one. Verizon has their own. Um, And this extends to all electronics. You buy a computer at Best Buy and you can get a three-year extended warranty, right? Right. Uh, Now... You know, I know you're probably not an expert on this. You probably haven't looked into all of them. But in general, are these warranties, like, a good idea? Uh, So the rule of thumb is that they are not. Okay. Um, uh, It'll come down to your personality type. So are you likely to drop your phone screen and crack it? Like, have you done that several times in the past? Like, maybe that's something you need to look into because, like, you have a tendency to do that. I have uh, never dropped my phone screen, right, in the 12-plus years that I've had a smartphone with a big, giant glass screen. That's not true. When I met you, you had a crack running down your screen. No, I had a tiny little crack in the corner of one of my... Of my <laughs> but you kept that phone for another was, two years. And it was behind the case yeah. that I had on my phone anyway. Yeah, because it didn't impact me, right? So even though, even though... Yeah, so I have dropped my phone, but it has never cracked the screen on it. So okay. Right, so... And it depends on what phone you get and what the glass is made out of and what it is, right? Um, you know, yeah, so I have dropped my phone a couple times in places where I've been lucky enough that it didn't crack mm-hmm. anything. So I've never had to get anything fixed. Um, the, there are a lot of people, I see people all the time, every time they show me their iPhone, there's got a big crack running down the middle of it, right? People tend to get it cracked. It's not broken enough that it's not unusable and they just keep going along with it, right? Um, technically the extended warranty would replace that, or there's all kinds of services that will get that replaced for you anyway, Mm -hmm. right? There's, you could do it yourself. Um, ifixit.com will show you the step-by-step instructions about how to fix like anything or how difficult it is to do so and they provide like a kit and there's like a twenty dollar kit you can get that has like every screw that for every phone for like every right. weird thing right because of course iphones have like their own unique screws in them um and glue and all kinds of stuff will give you like heat guns it's, it's a cool site um not a sponsor right of course um but you know, that's something that you can look into. There's, you don't have to go to Apple to do that, right? right for that, or, or Android or, or well, Google. Well, and, or you know, one example is my battery in my phone was dying. Right. Um, and I just went to the mall, and it was $70, but then it would have been $50 for me to order the stuff to do it myself. It was $70 to have them do it. Um, but there's, like, glue. You have to heat the glue to take it off, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. And for me, I was like, I'd rather have... Somebody else would do it because then if they screw it up, I would have gotten a brand new phone of equal or better value, um, you know, for their mess up. And I was like, paying $20 for that insurance is totally worth it. But now, you know, like my phone is already over two years old. This is going to hopefully extend it for another two years. And it was 70 bucks. So, you know, some of the, I know the warranty when I bought my phone would have been like $100 or something. $150, $200. Yeah. Yeah. So I... You know, instead of doing the warranty, I just waited until I needed to fix it, and the warranty would have run out by now anyways. So, you know, I think sometimes with warranties, it's hard because 
what is actually going to happen to your phone? I mean, if it's your screen cracking, you can get that fixed for 50 to 70 bucks or something. And, you know, is it going to happen before the warranty runs out in two years or will it happen after? And then you just have to pay for it twice. Right. And if there's like a major thing wrong with the phone, like the, the Note 7s that were like exploding, right? They're doing a full recall. They're getting your phone back no matter what. Uh, there's There seems to be a lot of issues with the new Pixel 2's uh, screen burn-in issues. Um, they're looking into that. They've extended the warranty on that out of the box. So uh, anybody that bought the extended warranty for that, they're refunding because basically they extended the warranty for everybody by default. So right. it, it null and voids that that extended warranty anyway. So they've just refunded everybody for that anyway. Um, you know, if there, if there is a major issue with your phone, then they're going to take care of it. They have a history of taking care of it. Um, but if it's... If it's just you're gonna break the screen, the usually the warranties that you pay extra for will cover multiple repairs, like up to two um, times that you'll need to replace the screen. But if you only break it once, yeah, you're pretty negligible. You, you probably would save money on having just somebody try and yeah. replace it. You know, anyway. you know, I think honestly, warranties kind of prey on people who get really nervous about this sort of thing. It is. Or don't save ahead. You know, we talked uh, in a, a pre pre previous podcast about how everything costs more when you don't have money. And I think this is a classic example of it because, you know, a lot of people, they don't have that emergency fund, so they just lump it in and they just lump it into their phone plan and they pay for it monthly and their warranty is just included now. But if you can not do that and just save up $200 and have your own little like cell phone warranty fund, then you might realize that that $200 lasts you through multiple phones and mm -hmm. getting minor things repaired here and there, or you might never use it and you can put it towards a new phone someday. Right, like that's exactly right. If you if you pay for it, but then don't need it, it was a waste, but, but you were paying for insurance and you know insurance in other areas of your life are very good things to have, uh, probably because it's, it's set up to be a lot better and more yeah. protective. This is very bare bones, doesn't protect you very well, well and it's so very expensive. I am an actuary by, by trade, right? That's my day job, not creating YouTube videos. and. If you look at the expected value, you know, when we price, I, I don't know that warranty companies have actuaries pricing these warranties. Um, I certainly have never met an actuary who does that type of work, but life insurance companies hire us to make sure that when we price things, there is a value add to the consumer. Mm -hmm. there, there's laws around that, there's protections around that. So insurance itself, auto insurance, life insurance, health, health insurance. insurance is all price so that it is adding value back to the consumer and it is protecting the consumer. I don't think that these same laws apply to warranties. Definitely not. And no. so I think when they are priced, like it's honestly just like kind of a money grab for some of these companies because it is not that cheap for, or it is not that expensive for Apple to have to replace your screen. They have I mean, a million screens. Yeah, they're, they're certainly looking at, you know, the overall big picture. They're like, how many people, you know, break their screen? How many people need to get it fixed? Uh, you know, the value of the warranty overall from the whole, how much would we actually have to pay out versus what we're going to be running in? And they definitely make a ton of money off of the, the warranties, yeah. right? Um, I know trip insurance is a huge one. That's um, a big one too. When I, w when I went to Jamaica, actually, it would have been a fifth of the trip price to, so 20, it was actually like 23% of the trip price to add insurance. And I was like, well, for that, with the, the you know, four of us going, we could just pay for a whole nother person to come. Like, right. it, you know, it's priced so high. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but your credit cards actually offer a similar protection, you know? Yep. So there's a lot of things out there that I think people just pay for because they get nervous or scared. And it's definitely not, super necessary so and, and you got to know what you're getting a lot of the time because i know somebody one of my friends just paid for trip insurance during the hurricane to get out of florida uh, because he knew he was going to have to um you know change flights at the last minute you know maybe um but what he got was not not what he expected because uh, a lot of the times weather on airplane flights if you get the travel insurance weather is not covered for that right it's an excuse that you can get your money back if you want to change flights exactly so, therefore you know he was just out of luck uh, because and got screwed on that whole airfare and just had to buy a brand new ticket for something else and eat the other cost because the insurance didn't cover what he wanted it anyway. Yep. No, definitely. So, um, well, I think that covers most of what we want to talk about. Basically, the morals of this is just don't buy things that you don't need. Only buy the things you want to buy. Know what you're buying, whether it comes to a product or a warranty or insurance or anything. And don't ever feel pressured to make the decision on the spot. 
if you feel pressure to make the decision on the spot, then it's, it's not a good purchase because it means that you're just impulsively doing it because you're scared and you're acting on emotions instead of facts. And that's what they want. That is what, exactly what they want. So what I want instead is for you to just take a step back, you know, walk away, jump on Amazon, jump on Google, you know, do a quick fact check and just make sure you're making the right purchases this holiday season and always. That's right. All year round. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to Money in the Bank. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment below. And if you're on any other service that we podcast on, thanks for listening and feel free to email me. I'll drop the contact information in. Thanks, guys.